So somebody, uh, Pavam asks, I'm not sure if he's from India or it's an yeah. Asian currency he's paying in. So he says, why shouldn't COVID patents be removed uh, if it can help countries like India? Uh, you know, assume that vaccine production does go up in the next few months because the patent are removed. Why is that a bad thing? So, so why? So again, because removing for, for a removing patents will not increase vaccine cre uh, manufacturing or distribution. It helps the elimination of patents helps zero people. There is no evidence. I just want to emphasize why I started off by saying this. There is no evidence that patents are a blockade or are preventing anyone from getting access to COVID-19 uh, COVID drugs or the vaccines. Um, um, now, why do you then, then you could say, well, then if there's no evidence, then what's the problem, right? Because then just get eliminated. Well, because then you're eliminating vital foundational property rights that are the basis for the vaccines that have been created in the first place and have been distributed. And, and the, the, you're eliminating the property rights that make possible the commercial agreements, the information sharing agreements. But as I mentioned, Biotech has, has partnered with Pfizer. That partnership was on the foundation of patents it's because it's property rights that serve the basis, the foundation for all commercial agreements, all agreements that are peaceful and are value producing between people are contractual agreements that are transfers of property interests. And if you eliminate property, then you eliminate the ability to have those types of peaceful, possible uh, commercial enhancing, value enhancing contracts. Absolutely. And you eliminate freedom. I mean, think about the slippery slope, right? Indians also need iPhones. I mean, they really need iPhones. I mean, why shouldn't we just force Apple to license its IP so the Indian manufacturer can stop producing iPhones? Um, or India needs money. Uh, why, why don't we redistribute all, all the money we have in the United yeah, States? Pretty rich still. C couldn't we just redistribute all the money? We, I mean, need. Once you make need the standard, yes. There's no end. You're willing to violate property rights, even if it's just just this one time, right? Because the need is great. You've established the precedent that need is the standard and private property rights don't matter. You're done. You're done in terms of freedom. And the other side has always understood this, right? I mean, Marx understood this, right? A hungry man is not free, right? And you know, and what the very first thing AOAC, AOC uh, tweeted at when the Biden administration announced that it was supporting his waiver proposal is, we're going to do insulin next. Yeah, because there's always an emergency, right? There's always someone somewhere in the world who's not getting a drug that they quote need, unquote. And Instrument, by the way, patent expired a long time ago, so it's <laughs> yeah. it's, it's in the public domain already. But, well, and you know, and 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 the fact that we have massive amounts of insulin is yes. entirely the result of this biotech innovation that was created that was served as the foundation for the company Genentech, the very first actual company that was successful, now a multi-billion dollar uh, biopharmaceutical company that was great in, on this ability to bioengineer insulin. It's why but diabetes today is not a death sentence. 30 years ago, if you were diagnosed with diabetes, that was largely a death sentence for you. You would you, Your life was now measured in decades as an adult or years as a child. It's now today an entirely manageable condition because of patents. Yep, yep. So why, so, you know, we always get this question. Why is insulin so expensive? <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a, it, it, another, know. another, yeah, another, yeah. Uh, but because patents are such the easy go to, uh, you know, uh, whipping boy, the old, you know, term for any problem, you know, for, um, the World Health Organization came out to, before I get to insulin, I just want to mention this, you know, and said, oh, well, the real problem in the developing world is patents. We really have to get rid of patents. By the way, they came out with a statement three years ago. Um, and the current estimate is, the World Health Organization has a list of the most essential medicines necessary, the, med the, you know, the medicines that treat cholera and diphtheria. 95% of them are off patent. 95% <laughs> of them have zero patents on them whatsoever. So clearly patents are not the reason why these medicines are not getting to people in the developing world, which goes back to my earlier comment about lack of infrastructure and distribution in developing countries. So um, insulin. Great. It's a great example. Great example. It's entirely a, a byproduct of government regulations and controls again. So, um, so you know, again, the the um, if you want to create a competing product to compete against insulin, you have to get FDA approval, and and um, and the FDA holds up the uh, the people and prevents people from creating 
competing products. This off, you know, because like I said, there's no patent. The patents, Genentech's patent on how to mass produce through bioengineering. Um, insulin expired years ago, decades ago. So, um, and so it's it's largely, you know, a byproduct of, of regulatory controls. Um, and also it's just a byproduct, you know, it, 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 and it's also in part a byproduct of that it's knowledge and know-how that makes it possible to create these things. You can't just all of a sudden say, all right, I want to create it and I'm going to do it tomorrow. I mean, this is really cutting your stuff. People don't realize these types of treatments, these types of drugs, you know, even EpiPens, I yep. mean, this is really cutting edge technology. These are the, these are Ferraris in the biopharmaceutical context, right? And, you know, and everyone's is, is going, no one goes around saying, why can't my, a Ferrari cost the amount of a, a Honda or a Toyota? We all know why, right? We should be recognizing the exact same fact when it comes to medical care. People don't need Ferraris, but they need EpiPens. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is EpiPen is a good example where there was a competitor, a European <laughs> competitor, and the FDA wouldn't allow them. So, yeah. you know, again, it's, it's the barriers to entry the FDA creates, not the market creates. And it's, an, and all oh, in the EpiPen one is another example where again, like patents got totally blamed for something the patents had nothing to do with. Yep. So one of the reasons why EpiPen became so expensive and became so uh, prevalent was because Congress passed a law about 15 years ago, mandating that any institution that receives federal funding, uh, has to have an ep uh, uh, epinephrine available in case someone in that in, uh, at that location has uh, an allergic reaction. And they used in the statute the word EpiPen. Okay. Now, if, you're, if you are a recipient of federal funds and a statute says you have to provide epinephrine, it doesn't say epinephrine, it says EpiPen. EpiPen. <laughs> and you want to make sure you don't lose your federal funds. What's the risk, most risk adverse thing you do? You say, I buy an EpiPen. <laughs> I mean, and so the federal government basically just created a massive demand for EpiPens. And what happens when you have massive demand? Prices go up. I mean, so uh, it's just another example of just, you know, a way in which the government kind of mucked things up um, on top of the uh, on top of the regulatory controls, because what Yaron said is exactly right. The FDA has also refused, you know, to, uh, a, a approval for generic, you know, quote, generic, unquote, versions of EpiPen to be made available. Mm -hmm. So Param is not giving up. From in, he is from India. Yeah. He says, and in India, I'm deeply concerned because my COVID, because the COVID in my country is worse than uh, was last year. Yeah. And if uh, if patients, if patents should be removed, uh, should not be removed. How do we help countries like India to move beyond the pandemic? Well, um, licensing agreements, right? I mean, yeah. as you said, there's no shortage. Yeah, I mean, so let me let me emphasize this again. So even before you had the explosion in, um, in the cases in India um, uh, that AstraZeneca had entered into a licensing deal with the Serum Institute of India to manufacture its, its, its vaccine. Even, I mean, they are manufacturing the vaccine in India right now as we speak. Um, and, and eliminating the patents doesn't magically produce more vaccines tomorrow to help the people who are currently sick or dying. Um, I mean, it, if, we had, if we had eliminated the, the, the regulatory restrictions and the trade restrictions and all the things that prevented India getting access to these, uh, these vaccines before, and by the way, and if India itself had, provi has, had provided reliable and effective uh, uh, patent right protection for biopharmaceutical innovations because they've been dragged that country kicking and screaming into protecting biopharmaceutical protections. They are one of the world's largest copyists of biopharmaceutical industry. They're known as this, they're known as actually India is known as the, as the pharmacy of the world. Um, yeah, Cause they, they, that's where they just mass produce uh, lots of, uh, lots of generic drugs. Um, you know, that, uh, you know, if they had actually had a system that, res that showed they respected these interests, so perhaps there would have been more people willing beyond just AstraZeneca to license in the country, their know-how and their knowledge and things of that sort, you wouldn't, then you would have had all of the resources already there and ready to go when you had your explosion of cases. Absolutely. I mean, the problem in India is India. The problem in India is uh, lack of property right protection, it's lack of free markets, it's lack of uh, respect for patents. And of course, the fact that you just don't have the manufacturing capabilities to produce, you've got a billion plus people, and you don't have the enough uh, manufacturing capabilities to produce all the vaccines. It, the only part of this that I'm sympathetic is the trade restrictions. 
yeah. are restricting India from importing the vaccine. The United States seems to right now have a surplus because we've got a lot of anti-vaxxers in the U.S. who, who are not going to get vaccinated. So uh, there's, there's massive production in the U.S. that's going nowhere. You could ship it to India. It's expensive, particularly the, the Pfizer because of the kind of temperatures you would have to hold it. But you could ship it to India. You could, you could fly it to India. That is not happening because of ridiculous trade restrictions that exist um, yeah, all over the world. So if you want to complain about something, complain about the trade issues um, and yeah. complain about your own government, your own government not providing the kind of property right protections that, that you would need in order and I also, to, to ramp up production. And I want to also emphasize that, you know, it, th this is always the problem with, well, this is an emergency. We'll eliminate the rights in this instance to immediately address this problem. So let's say, assume like, they, this would magically lead to people getting vaccines tomorrow, which it wouldn't in India. Um, you, uh, but the, as as Yaron and I talked about, there's always an emergency somewhere. And the signal that you just sent to every producer and innovator is the moment that that we have pushed enough by someone that there is an emergency need somewhere, we that their rights will no longer be respected. Their response is understandably, I'm not going to produce it. Why should I spend? over two and a half billion dollars, 10 to 15 years of tens of thousands of, of, of innovative, productive hours, you know, trying to come up with cures for hepatitis, treatments for diabetes. Uh, you know, these are, by the way, now manageable conditions that were death sentences. If they're just going to be stolen from me the moment someone, quote, needs it, unquote. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>